produced by Victoire. Victoire gives a special thanks to the EWF, Empire Wrestling Federation, and Mr. Jesse Hernandez, as well as SoCal Wrestling TV. Find the app on Roku. Hello again, fans, and welcome back to another episode of Stylin' the Podcast. And I am your host, Amir, along with my co-host, former WWE superstar, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together and give a good, huge round of applause for Rico Costantino. We're styling, Amir. We, we are, are styling. We are styling. But I've got to ask you first and foremost, Rico, where is the family? Yes. Where are you? Oh, you didn't know? No. Where were oh you? Gosh. My gosh. My talents and my skills are not only needed in Las Vegas. Huh. I am statewide. I am nationwide. I am worldwide. Yes. And this week, I'm in lovely Arizona. Lovely Arizona. Giving my, yeah. Giving my styling tips to those in need wow. of style. Whereabouts? Yeah. In, whereabouts in Arizona, man? Well, I'm about Prescott area. Right. Prescott. No, I can't. You, you don't say Prescott. You got to say Prescott. Prescott. Or else you sound like a tourist. Yeah. And I, moi, is yeah. never a tourist because yeah. I've been everywhere. That's right. You've even been to Paris, I'm sure. You've oh, all across Paris. We oui, oui, London, monsieur. <laughs> oui, oui. Et tu sais, je parle français aussi, alors. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, I'm in sunny Arizona. It's beautiful out here. I'm giving my styling tips yep. to some communities. And I wanted to come back because, wow, yeah. what, a, what a Netflix special. Oh, my yes. gosh. Yes. Oh. Yes, I think I, like you and the rest of the wrestling fans around the world, are gobsmacked uh, by, yeah. by what we've seen on Netflix. An incredible documentary series, although we will give a disclaimer. I've only, we've only watched the first three episodes so far. Three, yeah. Three out of the yeah. six. But Because uh, there's a lot of information. I mean, I, uh, I, I hope we get it all in within this time lot. I mean, there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. But, wow, what a... That was a great production. Yeah. Uh, great production uh, and put together pretty well as far as I, I, I see. Yeah. Great producers, it's, it's, directors. Yeah. It's kind of like the Muscles of Mayhem because mm -hmm. I, I was there with the Gladiators and I saw the 30-30 and that was thumbs yeah. down from the stylist, double thumbs yeah. down. Yeah. But the Muscles of Mayhem, they exposed – what they needed to expose and tore the true story of how the American gladiators were treated and how hard they worked. They worked injured. They were, they were just like the wrestlers, mm -hmm. professional yeah. wrestlers worked injured, tirelessly four shows a day, you God, know, for two work. and a half weeks. Yeah. I mean, any athlete, I don't care how fine tuned you are. Mm -hmm. You're going to have injuries when you go against that type of competition. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of those people weren't slouches, mm -hmm. you know, contenders. Uh, yeah. I, for one, I, yeah. I took it serious. This wasn't just a weekend warrior hobby trip. Mm -hmm. You know, I went there to measure my stick and see where I measured up to the American gladiators. Yeah. You know, that's why I went there. You're calling these five guys the best of the best. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to see how I measure up. Yeah. Exactly. And as it turned out, I became 1991 champion. That's, that's, but that's incredible. The, yeah, but that muscle. This production is on the same lines, mm -hmm. I believe, as Muscles of Mayhem. Yeah, because it really digs, gets into, you know, behind the scenes and one-on-one -on -one interviews, and they're not all in one room mm -hmm. where they can feed off each other. Mm -hmm. This is done separately. Yeah. So they they put it together. They piece the first three episodes. I think are pieced together very well. Yeah, very well, considering, uh, yeah, some people were filmed on a different day, like Tony Atlas from Shane yeah. McMahon, from Stephanie McMahon. I was surprised to see Linda McMahon looking healthy yeah. out there. You know, I haven't seen her for yeah. years on screen, so it was nice to yeah. see her contribute to the documentary. But I definitely think from what I've seen so far, uh, Rico, I'm not sure if you agree with me, but it, it, it definitely was not a burial of Vince McMahon. It did not seem that way to me. No, and... and uh Everybody's been trying to bury that guy for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's like a cockroach. He can't die. You know, a cockroach complimentary style. He's just, yeah. you know, 
he always has a comeback. And I will say Vince McMahon is a very smart businessman, mm -hmm. you know, and it portrays that in the first couple of episodes of where he took it, yeah. even though his father never wanted to mm -hmm. uh, have him wrestle. And that confirms what I heard from years ago. His mm -hmm. dad did not want him wrestling and somebody welched out and mm -hmm. he got to be an announcer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just smack dab got thrown in the position just like I did. Yeah. When I went up, got called up, I was thrown into a manager position. Mm -hmm. Never managed in my life. And yeah. what what lifespan did I have in the WWE? I, I was I was maybe two years old wrestling. Started yeah. in ninety eight. Yeah. And here I am in uh two thousand. Yeah. A yeah. manager. So yeah. I can understand Vince's struggle with that, getting tossed on yeah. the fire. Yeah. And he did very well. You know, yeah. people say, Well, he wasn't a good announcer. Yes, he became a good announcer. Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. And he worked well with the talent he had, Gorilla Monsoon, you know, uh, Piper, everybody, you know, mm -hmm. and then he brought in people like him, Bobby Heenan, you know, King, JR, mm -hmm. you know, and he he counted that position also very important announcing. And he said it on the, one of the episodes, you're telling the story to people what's going on in the ring, yep. what they're supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, and I did hear this is that, the announcers are not allowed to say this wrestler. They're supposed to say the name of the wrestler every time. Mm -hmm. You know, good thing I had a short name. Yeah. You know, because. Tommy Dreamer, Tommy Dreamer. I mean, you got to always say the wrestler's name. Oh, Tommy Dreamer's on top. Tommy Dreamer's coming from the second rope. Yeah. Maven to the high rent district. You yeah. know, yeah. they always want you to say the wrestler's name, not yeah. just, oh, look what he did. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know they they don't use pronouns. They use the proper noun for each wrestler and the moves. Yeah, the moves too. And you he know. and and I will back you up on that as well. And I, I've heard that many times that Vince was a bad announcer. He pretty much carved out. He was a voice of my childhood, and he did a good job. I don't think yeah. I disagree with that statement. I think he did tell a great story. He had a great voice for it. He mm -hmm. had passion, and he told the story through the the affectation of his voice and the different tones they use for certain. Yeah. And, and it was, and it worked and he carried that over to become the character, Mr. McMahon. Yeah. But he had fluctuation. You could tell yeah. when he was excited about some, you could tell when he was tense about something, Yeah, you know, and that's why Jr. So good. Uh, Coach was good. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill DeMott was good. Yeah. You know, uh, Taz and Cole. Mm hmm. Yeah. You All know, uh, May, uh, Coach and Snow. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You know, they worked well together and they fed off each other, you know, and uh, like I said, when I was wrestling, my goal was always to crack up the announcer because they really didn't know what was going on except for the finisher. But if I could get them to break character, I know they would break character. Yeah. And I don't know how many times I got Taz, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, oh, this guy's a nut. He just. Because he's, I'm doing a comeback, and he's yeah. like, I do something, then I go back into the Rico makeup character, yeah. and I do something funny. He goes, oh, this guy's a nut. When is he going to get serious? And all of a sudden, I do a move, do another move, and Cole goes, oh, he's back in the flow. Yeah. He's back in the flow. Yeah, you yeah. know. So yeah. I break away, do the character, and then get back to kicking butt. Yeah, but yeah, the announcing is just as important as the wrestling, getting it yeah. to the audience. Yeah, you know, the, the stadium people can't hear it. Right, but. The television and the tape, people can hear it. And then that it, it helps, especially yeah. when they keep saying the name and the name, the name yeah. gets implanted in your brain. Yeah. Because so that, you're put in over a product, that character yes. product. So yeah. you, you've got to remember that. And there are certain things that you have to remember too. And of course, when it's live TV, people that often yeah. think, well, there's pressure. There's an extreme pressure. Oh, on, yeah. On you to to make sure that your words articulate well, that you're making sense, that you're in the moment. You can't even if something happened prior to you arri arriving at the building, that's got to be in the past. You've got to focus yeah. on the present and you've got to tell that story. So I, I think Vince did a great job at that. And it was I, I was I, I found that kind of heartwarming when he told the story about his dad, you know, yeah. the fact that he didn't know him and then he met him and and that he loved his dad. But then on the flip side, you had Tony Atlas say that. Uh, yeah, you know, he never liked it. Yeah. Everybody's uh, got opinions like everybody's got belly buttons. Yeah. Right. So that's the perception one man took from Vince's father and son relationship. Yeah. Uh, I've never heard but anything positive about Vince McMahon Sr. You know, the stories that went around the locker room and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, 
Vince is a chip off the old block, but better. Mm-hmm. He's like version 4.0. Yeah. You know, because his dad, but they had that agreement with all the territories. Nobody would invade each other's territory and stuff like that. And Vince just thought outside the box. Yeah. Well, he, and he went. Well, he knew. Go ahead. He knew what had to happen. There's no way mm-hmm. you could have kept it in that small time arena feel. It would have fizzled out. It's like every yeah. incarnation of a new era. The reason I, you know, I just got to episode four. I haven't watched it yet, but that's the attitude era. And that attitude, I just pulled it up. Yep. Yeah, it had to happen because otherwise you yeah. have to stay. Your audience has become stale. And we saw that. Um, but during well, the- they said that in two or three, because yeah. Hogan became stale. And as Andre passed the torch to Hulk, mm-hmm. Hulk was trying to patch it to uh, Ultimate Warrior. Yep. But yep. as I wasn't aware of this because it was before my time, I didn't know. Jim, what was his name? Jim Helwig. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he didn't love the business. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he was a pain in the butt backstage because I wasn't even there yet. Right. right. But I met him and and like I said, gave him a ride to the arena when he was in Vegas. And my brothers and I showed up in his colors because he was facing Hercules Hernandez. Yeah. But, you know, I knew him on that level. I saw him in his gym here in the lovely state of Arizona. Yes. He had a gym gym. near Phoenix. Yeah. And uh, he was very nice you yeah know? um that's but, interesting uh, i i did not know that you knew the warrior because we know also he gets a lot of flack for some of the things he said but i think on a professional level like they said he didn't love the business but to me um that doesn't make sense because all i do is i look at the way he presented himself and everybody's got to understand he invested in all those costumes himself that was oh, yeah we he invested in all me too. I yep. know how that feels. Yep. yep. You, you too. So again, and I didn't know you had that personal connection. So every time you met him, he was a professional. He was kind, courteous. Yep. yep. Uh, like I, I, it might be another podcast. I told this story, but yeah, uh, we were in Vegas. It was eighties uh, and they were coming to Thomas and Mac and we were working out at the golds downtown and uh Road Warriors walked in and Warrior walked in. Yeah. And they're just humongous, yeah. you know, and they do. And then I'm leaving the gym and Warrior standing outside going like this. Uh-huh. And I said, what's going You okay? He goes, my guys left me. <laughs> I said, where are you staying? Yeah. He told me the hotel. Yeah. I said, you want to ride? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I put him in my Z28 Camaro, which he yeah. barely fit. Yeah. Hey, but he, he's sitting like this, you know, but I get him to the hotel. And on the way there, I said, hey, what colors are you wearing tonight? Because he always changed colors. Yeah. Like I did with my makeup. And I, he goes, I'm wearing uh, yellow and black. I uh-huh. said, good. We're in the front row. My brothers and I are going to be there. Yeah. I said, uh, we're going to be wearing yellow and black also. <laughs> All right, warriors, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Warrior Nation. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, and he, we went there. He wrestled Hernandez and there. My brother, my two brothers were there with me. We had Eiferman Jim sweatshirts and we had spray painted on the back, Insane Warriors. Okay. <laughs> so we were there with the black and yellow face paint yeah. and we gave Virgil crap. I mean, yeah. we teased Virgil yeah. and, uh, you know, he, he never broke character, yeah. but he, he bantered with us because it got everybody else. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. but he, it was all professional. He never, never, he stayed in his character. Yeah. You know, never lost his temper and uh, never swore at us, but we were going back and forth. Yeah. And uh, that was fun. And then um, I went to AIM, Athlete, Athletes International Ministries in Phoenix. Yep. Because I was a professional Christian athlete and Jim owned a wake workout gym in Arab feet in Phoenix. And I went there to work out and he had the yellow intercontinental title yeah. displayed. Classic. And I walked up and I said, I don't, you're probably not going to remember Mr. Hellwig. I said, but in Las Vegas, you know, I got, gave you a ride back to the hotel when the warriors dumped, you know, ditched you. Yeah. Road warriors. And he said, Oh, oh. and he goes, what are you doing here? I, I told him and stuff like that. And I said, got to ask you, can I have a picture with the, that belt? He goes, Sure. Yeah. He took a picture with me with the Intercontinental belt, the yellow one. Do you have access to that, Rico? Do you have I that? wish I could. It's like that was in my God, the 90s, which yeah. is almost 30 years ago. 
Yeah, hard to believe. I've moved a couple times. Yeah, yeah, but well, what incredible! What incredible foreshadow you had to think yeah. that yeah, you met him, and then later you would end up in the business. What? But 12, 12 years later, 10, 12 years later. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't even know. Yeah, I, I mean, I, wrestling was not in my things to do list. Right. You know. Right. Yeah. You know, but you know what's I need to do right now on my list? I think you need to. Yeah, I think you need to do it. Oh my gosh, it is a little warm here mm-hmm. for my style. Yep. I gotta sorry fans, I gotta 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 get rid of it. Gotta get rid of it. Gotta get rid of it. It's hot out there oh. for me. I mean oh, it's hot. I'm in an air conditioned room right now, so I'm not feeling it, but it is a hot outside here in California. Oh, that's better. Ring ready, Rico. <laughs> okay. Woo! Now you feel I'm free. <laughs> I know sip of my right. sip of my Earl Grey tea. That's all I have is Earl Grey. That's fantastic. And while you're doing that, I'm going to remind the viewers what would look great to us is if you, Rico, slay that smack down on that subscribe button. That's right. Get down. Subscribe. Slam, uh, put a smack down on it. And also to let you fans know, we have just uh, put ourselves on Patreon. So you can visit us on Patreon now. We do have a subscription area where you will have exclusive episodes coming very very soon so keep an eye on that you'll see a link in this channel if you go in the link section you can go down to the patreon link and go over there and uh find some exclusives from style in the podcast and more but now back to the show rico back to vince McMahon. you talked about his relationship with his dad you were there when shane and vince were there together as performers Mm -hmm. What did you see of their relationship? Were they close knit? Were they, did they communicate a lot? Oh yeah, you can tell it was definitely father son, yeah. and that the acorn did not fall far from the tree. Okay, uh, Shane uh, grew up in the wrestling business. I mean, since he could breastfeed, I uh, you know, and uh, he was around it all the time, so he got vast knowledge. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, he particularly didn't like me either. So him and his dad were on the same side. Mm. Uh, Linda and Stephanie liked me. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so I don't know what to say about that, but yeah. And Shane is the one that told me while I was still doing dark matches that I'd be nothing but a flat backer. I'll never make it in the business. That I'll was, be a jobber. So and I went, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you know what my attitude is. You tell me I can't do something. I'll do it. My attitude to stuff it right back at you four yeah. times harder and yeah. then succeed at it. Yeah. Which you did. Like the doctor's telling me I can't wrestle. Tell me again. Yeah. You're going to tell me I'm going to be a jobber. Say mm-hmm. it again. Yeah. 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 So yeah. But, but uh, Shane talked to me more than Vince mm-hmm. ever did, you know, cause he was in the ring a lot, talking to a lot of talent about various things and i'd always out of respect always say hi shane having a good day Mm -hmm. you know because i'm one of his independent contractors yeah did he warm up to you over time no uh he stayed the same okay um took a while for him to approach me because i think he was doing something with kurt angle Mm -hmm. uh at a pay-per-view something so him and kurt were in the ring before the television taping and then i was doing I don't know what match, but he was in the ring. And uh, like I said, I always said hello to Vince. Yeah. Always. I mean, I know he didn't like me, but uh, Mr. McMahon, hello. How are you today, sir? Fine. And then keep walking. You you know, know, but. But you know what's strange, Rico? Going back to episode one of Styling, Mm -hmm. Vince helped you in the beginning. And he sent you when you taught tore your quad, he sent you off and he paid for the doctors. He still paid your check and everything else. So I wonder, um, was there anything that you can site that maybe broke down that communication because he seemed to obviously have liked you in the beginning when he first brought you on so is there anything that you know that may have rubbed in the wrong way well no um jr let me know early on my age was going to be a factor oh okay so i already knew that Mm -hmm. uh what surprised me is vince actually did what he did nobody told him that i'm aware of Mm-hmm. to take care of me. And he was un- not under any contract with the developmental to take care of me. If I got hurt, I'm on my own and I have to get fixed. Yeah. You know, but he took the extra step. Mm-hmm. He got me, he 
because I had drove my car there because I stayed, you know, three weeks, went home a week. Yeah. Because married with kids and uh, came back and mm -hmm. did all three territories like we talked about last episode. If you missed it, go watch it. Yep. You'll understand where I'm going. Yep. So, um, so when Cornette came to me and said, Vince is handling all this. I was like, he is? Yeah. We got your plane ticket for tomorrow because I just got out of the hospital and told me it was torn. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he said, you go, you're going to, you know, go to Louisville airport. We're going to fly you home. You're going to see this doctor and the doctor is going to recommend this physical therapist. Like I said, Keith Clevins, mm -hmm. where all the pro athletes go. Yeah. And he still paid me my weekly. Yeah. So that was over and above something. Maybe in his mind, because I know he would watch tapes because JR would report to him on all developmental talent, you know, talent. And I just think, you know, because I got hurt during a match, he had a conscious thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he didn't, like I said, I'm not calling Vince a total butthead. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. And I'm, I'd never say that. And I don't hate him. I don't hate anybody. Right. I might not like him or dislike him, but I don't hate anybody in this world because yeah. that's self destructive. Yeah. You know, uh, but he did the right thing. Mm -hmm. So I got to say that for v Vinny Mac, yeah. you know, he stepped up when he didn't have to, mm -hmm. even though he didn't like me, thought I was too old for the business, mm -hmm. still stepped up and did the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is admirable, which is a characteristic of somebody. And that's what I saw here. I saw cracks in his armor in that first, yeah. when he talked about his dad, there were certain moments there, you know, when WCW was breathing down his neck and, and I mean, hats off to Vince. It did seem like everything was coming at Vince to try to destroy him in the nineties, late eighties. Yeah. And, and yeah. I, I can, you know, as a, as a youngster watching WWE, I remember when it started becoming, the arenas became smaller and smaller. And then there yep. was smoke in the arenas to kind of blur the fact that there was no one there. Right. And every, everything, the production values went down. I remember thinking, what's going on? Because three years prior, you had the ultimate, you had Wembley Stadium, SummerSlam. Yeah. 90. And now all of a sudden you're down to this. You're, I, you're not down to the, you're down to Thomas's Max B arena. Yeah. You know, you're down yeah. there. You're not playing the Mac anymore. Right. What happened? You filled the Mac a year, couple of years ago yeah. with no yeah. problem. Yeah. And then had to use the sub stadium for yeah. Titatrons. Yep. Yeah. You know, and all of a sudden. Yep. It just went, everything was gone. But now I understand, you know, as I've matured now, as we all do in life, now we know if you have that much, uh, that much of an arsenal coming at you. And one man in particular, Phil Munchnik, did not oh. do much to help that. In fact, from my perspective, the guy who writes for the New York Post, he's a reporter yeah. from the New York Post. He has been since 1982, everybody. It seems like he had a personal vendetta against the WWF. That's what did you think? Yep. Oh, I, I echo that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, reporters are supposed to be unbiased and report the facts, which we don't have in current news nowadays. Everything is, you know, I like Walter Cronkite. Oh, yeah. This is the news and the facts. And if they wanted to give their opinion on whatever the news was, news was it was called an editorial yes. that came after presenting the facts. Yeah. See, everybody puts their own personal touch on news. That's why I don't watch news nowadays because I don't want to hear them. Just yeah. give me the facts. I yeah. I plug into the BBC news because mm -hmm. they report on America, but yeah. they just say the facts. Yeah. Interesting. I don't get all this other BS. Yeah. I don't need your fluff. I fluff it myself. That's it. Yep. Interesting. So, Interesting. Yeah. Reason. I do the same. In fact, sometimes I ask our little, I won't say our name because otherwise she'll turn on, you know, the, it, the devices we have in our house that begin with. Yes. It. And I say, you know, play the BBC, you know, news. And uh, I do listen to that. Um, I think, and I agree with you on that. I do think in the last few years, though, the BBC has taken a slant in yeah. one direction over another. But anyway, that's another story. That's it's not still not as bad as American news. Yeah, neither. I mean, not. they're 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 following, but they haven't reached our degradation. Yeah. Um, it's it's definitely so. Um, where were we? Remind me. I've been hitting the head with chairs we, too much. We, <laughs> we were talking about Phil Muchnick, and now yeah. Oh, that man. That oh, I I dislike him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he made mountains out of molehills on yeah. some things. Yeah. Not everything. 
mm-hmm. but he made mountains out of molehills because nobody else would touch it. And that's how he got his claim to fame. Mm-hmm. He yeah. went after one of the biggest fish in the wrestling entertainment business, and he made his point to chip his armor. Yep. And he and he you certainly know. he certainly did chip it. Yeah, but there were some stories that were true yep. that needed to be said. Now, mm-hmm. I agree with that part. If you're trying to help somebody, uh, especially the female referee, mm-hmm. uh, her name is what happened happened. Rita. Rita. Yep, Rita. Yeah, if that really happened, uh, that's terrible. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the thing with the ring boys. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, okay, and they Tom implicated. Holt. Yeah, and they implicated three people. Mm-hmm. Well, two of the people I did not know, but I personally knew Pat Patterson. Mm-hmm. And he was nothing but professional to me. In fact, he's the one that saw Charlie and I go against each other and then went to Vince the next week and said, these guys need to be tag champions. Mm-hmm. Wow. And there was no extracurricular activities involved for us wearing the belts. Mm-hmm. Pat just believed in what all three of us were doing. Yeah. And it would be good TV. Mm -hmm. Let's start this angle. Let's get the triangle going and let's push them and get them out to the public. Okay. He was a great booker. Yeah. And he used to come to Vegas all the time uh, for a local promotion. Mm -hmm. And I used to see him all the time. Yeah. Never, ever one time did Pat Patterson hint, ask, or flirt with a, with a proposition. Me. Never once. There you go. So, And he was, he was a a, a gay gentleman, Mm -hmm. but there's the key word, gay gentleman. Mm -hmm. He knew when he could do that and when he couldn't, Mm -hmm. couldn't do it with talent. Now I, I saw Tony Atlas said that he grabbed him in a private area and the, the guy behind the camera said, well, who'd you go to? And then Atlas replied, well, I can't go to nobody. The only person on top of him is Vince. Mm -hmm. He says, why don't you go to Vince? Well, if I wanted to get fired, I'd go to Vince. Yep. Yeah. You know, so Tony kind of closed that circle, Mm -hmm. but uh, Bruce Pritchard, which I saw on this and I liked Bruce. Mm -hmm. I like Tom better, but I like Bruce up until he went on his podcast and told me that during the wedding segment, he had to slap me in the face so hard when I was on the cell phone to get me into character. Oh, yes. Heard about that. I didn't like that because if anybody, I don't care who you were, you're going to slap me Mm -hmm. an aggression. Mm -hmm. You're going to be in the hospital or yeah. there's going to be a chalk line in your body somewhere, yeah. wherever you land. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I told Bolin on a podcast. I said, was there, did he have an emergency bill? Emergency mm-hmm. hospital bill? He goes, no. I said, was there a chalk line on his body at the arena? No. I said, then he didn't slap me. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I, th- I think I have heard that. And that was hard to believe. I'm not sure why he would have said that. But Bruce, you know, Bruce has been around for so many years. He was doing the brother yep. love character. Brother in the love. Yeah late eighties. So he's definitely, um, I would say obviously a bit of power has probably gone to his head over the years. Yeah. Uh, and a little- he was a Vince man too. Mm-hmm. Him, Laronitis, yeah. Vince men, you know, they were protecting Vince. Yeah. So when he says no comment, you really know why. Yeah. You know, uh, so from that comment, I, I dislike Bruce Pritchard mm-hmm. and it makes it hard for me to believe anything he says. Okay. Because if he lied about me, who is he lying to out there yeah. in the internet world? Who is he lying to? What's yeah. he telling you? You know, uh, you know, if a police officer does that on the stand, if he perjures himself on the stand, it's called a Brady Act. Mm-hmm. He could never testify in a court of law again. Okay. And departments fire him for that because they're they're Brady officers. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you put your hand on the Bible, you swear to tell the truth, the whole yeah, truth, nothing it. but the truth, so help you God. Yes, you lied. Yeah. And the cross the defense crosses you and puts you in a lie. Now you're brought up on Brady charges. Okay. So Brady, Brady charge. That's what they call it here in America. Okay. So Bruce lied and he lied about something that I remember clearly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So to me, I don't trust him. So when I watch his interviews, uh I don't believe everything he says. Speaking of not believing truth, fact, fiction, all of that good stuff. So there was some um, uh, motivation in that documentary that would suggest that the lines between reality and fantasy, of course they do. They blur in pro wrestling. So not everything we can hear, like you said, from Bruce Pitchard or Vince McMahon, we may not necessarily be able to believe 
Um, but having said that, and what you just uh, revealed about Bruce Pritchard, it, it makes me now question some of the authenticity when Vince was talking about his dad, because um, it brings back that image of Tony Atlas saying, no, he didn't like him. But that's by the by. I want to I go on to the uh, steroids uh, scandal, because now you talk about making a mountain out of a molehill. I think there is one right there, because, yeah. again, steroids were legal. Everyone was taking them. And, and I'm sorry to burst the bubble of many out there right now who may be watching. But sometimes when you see, I'm not saying all of them, but common sense, when you see an actor suddenly whip themselves into shape in six months and put on 50 pounds of lean muscle, don't for a minute believe that comes naturally because it doesn't. It's impossible. All right. Look up the facts online of how much muscle you can gain per year in your 30s and 40s, and you will be shocked. It's not as much as you think. Nope. So quality muscle tissue, you cannot gain that much. It's in the single digit percentage. Yeah, single digit percentage. So the steroid trial in 1990 or 92 obviously rocked pro wrestling. All the guys yeah. drunk in WWF. And yeah, admittedly, you know, even as a kid, I remember noticing I was like, Hulk Hogan looks all skinny. What's going on? I remember saying, I remember thinking that as a youngster. Um, so it did have huge repercussions on the business, but Vince plowed through. I don't know how he managed his stress levels at the time, but um, he was facing some serious sentences there, Rico. They were talking about- What was it, 11 years? years? Yeah, 10, 11? 11 years. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 17, and they threatened Hulk with 11. Yes. I, 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 yeah, I think he was facing- I, Don't quote me on it, because I watched it all after I drove into this fine state of Arizona- Yes, yes. <laughs> but so, uh, but Rico, in terms of law today, so what is the deal with steroids today? Because you have been in law, you are in law, and you you know. Yeah, uh, I know Nevada classifies it as a cat class three scheduled drug. It is illegal to obtain without a doctor's prescription. Okay. Uh, you can't just go buy it in a pharmacy like it's on the shelf. I'll take some DECA, some testosterone, sepanate. How about some propanate over there? I'm going to get some DECA Durabolin over there. No, you can't do that. Yep. You know, it has to be by a doctor. And there has the doctor has to show good cause mm -hmm. why he's prescribing this steroid to you. And that it's not a bodybuilding tool. Right. That's how strict they've gone on it. Because uh, uh, when I was my first time at police officer in the 85, North Las Vegas, uh, I pulled somebody who had a whole gaggle load of steroids mm -hmm. in his car. And when I looked up the law, because I had the current edition of the Nevada Rye statutes, I could not find any of those steroids under the one through five schedules. Okay. So I had to let the guy go. Mm -hmm. But two years later, I stopped somebody else who had a whole gaggle. But then the law was put in effect that they were schedule three. So I confiscated all that, and that guy had to go answer for his charges. Okay. All right. And I've told you my steroid story when I was young, but I went through a doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and it did improve me. I went from 176 to 218 pounds. My bench went from barely 225 to 420. Mm -hmm. 500 pound squat, 600 pound deadlift. Mm -hmm. Yes, it enhances, yeah. enhances muscle. Or yeah. athletic ability. And yeah. in every PDR there is, physician desk reference, PDR, you look up the steroid, and at the bottom of an asterisk, it'll say, does not enhance athletic ability. Of course it does. And I'm like, yeah, it does. Of course yeah. it does. Yeah. I'm, I'm living proof of that. Yeah. And, I, and I'm, I'm not going to, you know, try and incriminate myself or anything, but I'm not going to be a novice either. You know, I have taken them in the past when I was younger. Yeah. And I experimented with them as a lot of youngsters who are enthralled with bodybuilding do to say yes. that don't is an absolute lie. Um, yeah. And it did. I, I, you know, myself personally, I went from, you know, benching about two plates up to way, like, way over three in a short period of time. Yeah. See, that's 225. Two plates yeah. is 225. Yep. 45, 245, 245. That's 240. You know, I went to four plates and I think, uh, 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 either fives or tens on the side. I can't think of it right now. Yeah. That's four plates. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. you know, being two hundred and eighteen pounds, that's not bad. Yeah, not bad. Because you, you know. must have been still pretty lean that way. Oh yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to say something. Um, the steroids. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I, they said something on the special. Vince, I never saw Vince tell anybody that they must take steroids to keep their job. Okay. Never told me that. I've, I've seen Vince, you know, walking. I've walked by conversations he was having with people. Nothing remotely came out of his mouth like that. Right, right. Uh, to, that I'm aware of. So okay. if it happened, it happened, but it, I cannot uh, testify to that. But I think, but and, I think, but I think Rico, I mean, it was just, it's like when bodybuilders say, well, if I'm going to compete in the Mr. Olympia, I'd be a fool to think that I can go in there and compete. So in the eighties and nineties, when you yeah. get into a locker room and everyone around you is 240, 250, 280, yeah. uh, and, and, and then you've got somewhat of a body and you're one of those guys. Well, it's just like uh, it's not peer pressure. It's just common sense. It's like, well, OK, I've got to wrestle, you know, and say, yeah. hey, you guys. And it helps with injuries, too. Yep. You know, um, uh, and I, I got to say for Terry uh, Hulk, yep. he went and he told the truth in court. And I believe Terry because I know Terry one on one, mm -hmm. you know, and he's not going to lie. But he told he didn't give the government what they wanted, which was to hang right. Vince. Yeah. He said, Yeah, I took him, which mm -hmm. he should have said on the Garcinio Hole show. I wish God, I wish he'd have just came clean. Yeah, yeah. Now Vince is in the background going, Oh, I wish he'd have done that. I don't know if that's true or not, but it it is so captain obvious. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're in wrestling, bodybuilding. Any of that, even baseball players, football players, basketball, were getting busted with steroid use back then. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, everybody was doing it until they they put the laws on it, yeah. and then everybody started getting caught. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you, to blame Vince to let people make their own decision whether they want to be on steroids or not is preposterous. That's why yeah. the federal government lost their case. Yeah, you know, and I already told you and everybody out there. I didn't choose a steroid route when I went to wrestle because there was Batista, Triple H, you know, a Brock Lesnar, mm -hmm. uh, Cena. These guys were already built and younger. Yeah, they were doing so it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna entertain. So yeah. I'm gonna go over the charts and entertain. Yeah. And get as much mileage as I can out of it. Yeah. So, you know, but I still worked out mm -hmm. every day mm -hmm. that I was on the road. I tried to eat right, which is very hard on the road. Yeah. You know, uh, I never went to Pizza Hut and McDonald's and stuff, but I'd go to Applebee's and TGI Fridays mm -hmm. and try to get the cleanest food I could, which is, you know, it's still got the salt, mm -hmm. oil, you yeah. know, it's not the best, but it's the best you can do on the road. I'll also, Unless you have your own trailer yeah. and you're driving in a, in a mobile home. I'll also plug over because one of the things here we do here in the United States anyway, it's, it's out here. I found the El Pollo Loco. Uh, does a pretty good yeah. job because I can get some couple of chicken breasts, some broccoli, yeah. a little bit of mashed potato if I want it. Uh, yeah. And it's a reasonable price. It's pretty good. So that's another yeah. one. Maybe they'll become a sponsor one day. But anyway. yeah, <laughs> but so well, uh, when I when I was with the broken hip, I wasn't working out. So I has, still had to have lunch. Mm -hmm. We have something called Chipotle here. Yes. Chipotle. OK, yeah. it's it's like a pollo loco, except you go to like a buffet style. You get white brown rice, you get chicken steak mm -hmm. and other specialty. And they put the, you know, all the, the vegetables on it. You put the salsa, whatever you want. Yeah. And it, it was reasonably priced, you know, yeah. and I, I got a little bit extra off because, because you know, because I'm a, a retired officer. So I got a discount, 10 percent discount or something like that. So I would start, you know, get that pollo um uh chipotle bowl yeah and then i would pick on it throughout the night when i had time in between calls and you know a uh, patrolling yeah and uh you know and i put on a little weight because of the rice yeah. you know i i tried to always get brown rice but there's that time you just got to get the white yes yes you and you've got to treat you, yourself you, you gotta have some carbs sometimes man you can't be a yeah good running on empty especially when you're no. you've got to have yeah. your energy You've got oh, to yeah. agree. So that diet uh, is just as important. Oh, yeah. well, let's go on to the next one. Next subject. Yeah. So we uh we saw Vince McMahon did make an appearance on the Phil Donahue show. Oh, yeah. And that's another that, pit bull that wouldn't let go. Yes, that didn't go very well for Vince, even though he thought that it would. Um, mm -hmm. but again, he held his ground and 
just, you know, I imagine Vince, do you remember that movie? Uh, some of the young, younger audiences don't watch it, but it was, a th I think it was called The Departed with Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jack and, Nicholson, DiCaprio. Yeah. Oh, oh he, yeah. He shows his hand there. And it's all like yeah. still. And he says, look, my hand shouldn't be still like this. He's got no nerves at all. So I, I assume right. this is probably the same type of person after hearing this. Because, again, everything. You've got steroids. You've got the Phil Munchnik breathing. Boy, boy ring. You got the boy ring. The, you know, uh, you got a referee thing. Yep. You've got uh, uh, the two reporters. The one yep. Schultz slapped. Yep. And... Uh, the other one, Hulk, John, like, John Stossel. His head. It was John Stossel no, who David Stossel Schultz. was a slap. Yep, and, and Belzer, Belzer was the head. Yep, which was awful. I, I, did you see Hogan's reaction when he stood up and he saw the blood? He was like, "Uh oh, that's it." We're yeah, because he really choked him out on accident. Yep. Uh, but you know, uh, to, to, for those reporters to do that to an athlete, because I don't care what anybody says, a professional wrestler is an athlete. Yeah. Try running the ropes, anybody out there. Go four times and see if you got your breath, if you mm -hmm. are not gassed. Because mm -hmm. I was a, I was an athlete after American Gladiator, stuntman. I ran the rope four times, and I was gassed at Jesse's ring. Yeah. Four. Yeah. And I was a, a top athlete, mm -hmm. stuntman. Mm -hmm. So, yes, professional wrestlers are athletes. So they're good actors. They're entertainers. And they, they put on a show. Mm -hmm. No different than any stunt show, Batman, Conan, mm -hmm. uh, Beetlejuice. I don't care where you go. It's a show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And th that documentary said that mm -hmm. it's allowing us with the Iraq, Iran situation yep, for Vince so. to create characters for us to go. Yay. Boo. Cause yeah. we could not approach an Iranian or an Iraqi man and spit in his face and tell him what we think. Right. Yeah. No, so but we could do it in a wrestling arena. Yep. And interesting facts. I'm going to bring up two facts, Rico, for our viewers. So Richard Belzer got a settlement of four million dollars from the lawsuit against Hulk Hogan and the WWF. He went that, and that's baloney. Yep, he went baloney. He, he bought a farmhouse in France and called it. Wait for it, She Hogan. She Hogan. Yep. What a yep. prick. That's what happened. Oh. I did a little research. Hey, yep, man. Well, okay. Tell me if you saw what I saw. This guy challenged Hogan. And Hogan yep. was trying to be nice. Yep. Oh, it's fake. It's not this. It's not that. Oh, you want to see? Mm -hmm. And he stepped up. Said, yeah, I want to see. Yep. Well, you know what? You're a, a, a stick man. And Hulk puts him 22 inch or whatever it was, biceps mm -hmm. under your chin and squeezes for a second. Your little scrawny butt is not going to make it. Yep. And right. Hulk would, uh, Terry wouldn't purposely know if he fell out. Let go of him like that. No. And let him hit his head. Terry wouldn't have done that. Because all professional wrestlers are programmed to take care of your opponent mm -hmm. so they can work the next day and make money. Yeah. Because as the documentary said back then, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year, you don't wrestle, you don't get paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was a different. Okay. Different. It was different when I was there, but I worked 50 weeks a year, four mm -hmm. days a week, unless it's a pay per view, five days a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that was my schedule. Yeah, which is so, a little bit now. You know, but Terry would have never let that man hit the floor if he knew he was out. Mm -mm. That That's my belief because I have a, I, I know Terry beyond wrestling. Yeah, I, I, I don't think he would have let him fall like that either. No. I was surprised to hear that. Um, you know, there were so many things in those first three episodes. Oh, by the way, also another interesting fact for viewers. So Tom Cole, the young man that was involved in the uh, boy ring scandal. The other two yep. gentlemen, Rico, were Mel Phillips, the ring announcer, who mm -hmm. others have called oh, him. Oh, they, they called him a pedophile. Pedophile. Flat yeah. out on that. Yeah. Yep. Him he was and, a ringleader. Him and Terry Garvin. So Tom Cole actually committed suicide at 50 years of age. The young man that was uh, supposedly, mm -hmm. um, yeah, he committed suicide. It was, I looked it up, um, I think it was a few years back, but yeah, I uh, don't know if it had anything to do with you know, the abuse or stuff he suffered back then. But yeah, he must have had some issues going on through his life. But yeah, he committed suicide. Tom Cole. Um, sorry to hear that. Yeah, Did he sorry. ever get settled with the WWE or he never got anything from them? Because we have a jam-packed action schedule today, I didn't get to read those details. Okay. Yet. We'll reveal right. that part two next week. 
Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's, and then I'm going to look more into the reader referee uh, scandal too, because Vince admitted right. there that he did have a thing with her, but he said consensual it was consensual. And um, again, we can't, you know, I just say to the viewers, go back and watch when she talks about it um, on the show, whatever show she was on. I think it was Geraldo. It was Geraldo. Yeah, she went to Geraldo because Vince sued Geraldo, Donahue, and her yeah. for defamation. Yeah. So, again, I don't know. Uh, he admitted to it, but uh, he says that he, there met, was... he admitted to having intercourse with her or a relationship with her. Yeah. He didn't admit to rape. Right. And I think. And... I'm going to go out on a limb here. If not the same thing didn't happen to Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. He went to her room at her request and then she turns around and goes, he raped me. Yeah. How did they convict him? Yeah. I mean, you just don't. I, 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 yeah. I, 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 again, I, I, I mean, it's so bizarre how <laughs> some of these things get twisted. It kind of makes you almost be worried about just walking around and existing actually because anybody can kind say, of. anybody can say anything and it's just like really i mean that doesn't basically my takeaway from the first three episodes rico was that i see there were a lot of i mean obviously the thing with jimmy snooker that's bad oh, yeah that's bad yes um snooker yeah. was I, I believe i believe vince's powers were involved to some limitation but I think Vix tried to protect his top performer. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Go ahead. Yeah. He was, uh, but he was charged of third degree murder, but he was never mm -hmm. convicted because of his uh, health condition. He was later on in years. Um, but yeah, it happened in 1983. A uh, girl was found dead in a hotel room, Allentown, Pennsylvania, specifically. Yeah. And um, yeah, Vince, um, you know, but again, they ruled it a homicide. Which is a murder, yes. basically, right? Right. And then it was then it was brought down mm -hmm. uh, yep. for what you know. It didn't explain it in the documentary, and I wasn't definitely involved in wrestling back then. Yeah. But you know, um, yeah, when somebody dies, it's it. Mm -hmm. Now, and um, for people who don't know, or the boys know this. Fans, female fans that just worship wrestlers. The boys call them rats. Okay. Ring rats. That's their moniker. So what Tony Atlas was saying was, I believe that because it still exists today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, a wrestler's taking advantage. Not, and I don't condone any of it, mm -hmm. but if it's consensual and you're not harming each other, mm -hmm. uh, you're two grown adults, as long as they're adults. Right. Okay. Yeah. I don't condone under yeah. 18 thing. You know, that, let me clear that up right there. Yeah. Um, yeah, if they look young, I D them. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah, don't forget, they're in search of you. You know, mm -hmm. you're the professional. Mm -hmm. Come on, have yeah. some common sense. You got to have common sense, man. It's got to have common sense. It's disrupted quite a few of the talent, actually. Um, yeah. Uh, in more recent years, too. There have been a couple of have been completely blackballed from the industry. Uh, yeah. Just, again, through something that they claim was consensual. But... The media wouldn't have that. And, uh, you know, there was uh, no trial by fire. I mean, it was just trial and execution, you know? Yeah, trial, execution. No judge. No, no judge. Uh, <laughs> well, so we right from accusation to termination. Yep, to termination. <laughs> so it's happened time and time again. Uh, that's yeah, just, but that's what we live in now. Um, you got to protect yourself as a professional. I yeah. don't care what you're in. Professional sports, Major League Baseball, football, basketball, hockey, professional wrestling because we have a wrestlemania baseball mm -hmm. has world series super bowl so we're among the professional athletes yeah call it what it is yeah you yeah. know wwe f whatever you want to call it you are a professional athlete and you you're an actor and an entertainer yeah. you're professional yeah you get paid for doing stunts yeah and you've got to maintain that professionalism and, and you, you have to yeah. Yeah. yeah, nothing's easy. It's not like the old days. Go out and get drinks, drunk, and then mm -hmm. take a rat home. Mm -hmm. No, no, you've got to you've got to stay professional. And of course, that's a you know your character too. I mean, if you're married, 
you've got to honor that 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 sanctity of marriage as well. You know, check yes. your, check your morals and values. If you know, it, and it, and I think also, like I would advise anybody, if you're going to enter a field like that, and you have an ounce of moral decency, or you have your faith, like Rico and I do, um, find somebody that can hold you accountable. Find an, someone more mature than you that you can stay in communication with while you're going on that ride. And then you can have accountability with that individual. And I think that would be great for anybody who's an athlete, who's going into that realm, because then it would keep that person grounded through it all. Mm -hmm. Someone who's on the yeah. outside, someone who's not making millions of dollars, but someone who's got their feet on the ground and remembers you before you were that, before you became that person. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, uh, believe me, the the fans are ruth ruthless. Mm -hmm. I had fans knocking on my hotel door. I'm like, "How'd you find me?" Yeah, you know. And then even in my promo photos, a couple of promo photos, you see me wearing a wedding ring with yeah. two rows of diamonds in it. Yeah, and I'm wearing it to let everybody know. Yeah, yeah, I'm married. Yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, it didn't end well, but. You know, we got divorced for other reasons. It wasn't for infidelity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you know, uh, it, you know, just fans just get that, but they don't. For me, I don't know if I can say this on you can edit it out. Mm -hmm. Uh, making love and and match matrimony that that means something. You just yeah. you just don't go out and have sex with anybody. I I mean, I've never been like that, mm -hmm. no. so. To me, it's something special because you're giving something of yourself to another person. They're supposed to be giving it back, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and you can't do all that in one night. Uh, yeah. That's my that's my thinking. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, along with the drugs, uh, booze, painkillers, women throwing it at you like you're it's a Frisbee. Mm -hmm. you got to be on guard all yeah. the time and yeah. then work out and get the show right. Yeah, this is. Believe me, if you're trying to get into WWE for the money, you ain't going to make it. Right. I'll exactly. tell you that right now. You ain't going to make it. Yeah. And but if you love the business, the business itself, mm -hmm. where it's pure, mm -hmm. down to this lowest common denominator, if you really love the business, you'll make it. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking for this business to get you into any one of those areas, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're not going to last long. Right. Or you'll probably even make it to the big stage. Right. Or alternatively, if you're looking at it as a a, um, a jumping a hopscotch into another endeavor, into another field, um, you know, some people have done that. It's been questionable. I mean, and they do get a lot of heat from the fans, the ones that have done that. Um, but I think you I agree with you, Rico. And I would say the same thing to anybody out there looking to get in the business. You know, Rico and I both have a, a love and a respect for pro wrestling. And the and the, and what it means, what it has, what it accomplishes, its ancillary effects. I, the other day, I heard uh, Dwayne uh, the Rock Johnson on an interview saying that statistically, wrestling is one of the most um, um, searched items on YouTube. Rico, out of everything, really, wrestling is. So wow. it is. It has made a huge impact uh, in the world arguably one of the most all-inclusive art forms there ever has been it's more than a movie i agree, um, I agree that yeah because in the movies movie. they say cut and a stuntman comes in yep and then they go action yep. no i agree that's a very accurate assessment of the wrestling business yep and then we respect it entirely rico I'm going to put uh, a, the that'll be the end of this episode for the viewers okay. on on uh, for styling for the first review of the first three episodes of the Vince McMahon documentary on Netflix. Viewers, we will be back next week and mm -hmm. uh, we will be airing it uh, probably between Wednesday and Friday of next week. I'll give you fans an update before we release it. But uh, Rico, have you got any closing comments for for viewers this week? Well, to let you know, my producer and host of this podcast, okay. I might be on the road when we're going to be on. So I could be on my way to another destination to give my fashion okay. tips and styling advice. Yes. So you might be on the road with me. Okay. I don't know. Let me know right. when you got it all set. 
Okay. So we could right. be on the road. We I mean, you be. never know with Rico. Yeah. You could be, we could be at the pool at the Palms and sunning and I could do the podcast or we could be yeah. at a, you know, could be, in could Texas be. at yep. a barbecue, at a could rodeo, be. at a roping. Could be at the Riviera, you know, out could there. Could be at the Riviera yeah, yeah, overseas. Yeah. yeah. Overseas. I, and, and my the, skills are acquired yeah. all over the world. I know. I know. Fashion tips. Yeah. And, and you never know. In the, in the near future, you and I may be together in the same spot because, uh, you know, we may have to join forces and give fashion tips to some some individuals. You know, there's quite a few. might have to. So we, we, we well, make a reservation. Yes. Even though you're my host, but you got to make a reservation. I am oh, yeah. in demand. Oh yeah, I, I will. I Definitely will demand. Absolutely, make reservations. Of course. Okay. And, and also, I just want to give us a little plug here for all of you fans of Rico and Billy and Chuck. I have confirmation in December, Chuck will be joining us as a special guest. So you will see. A- yes, Chucky. All right. So My you boy, will, you will see a part reunion here. I have reached out to Billy. I haven't heard back from him yet, but if we can make that happen and bring the whole group back together, we'll make it happen. <laughs> oh, you got Rico smiling and styling now. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. they were two of my best clients. Yep. Oh, yeah. Two and you of made, my best clients. You made them championship material, my friend. Yep. <laughs> and to all of you out there, never forget. Never forget. What your mind can conceive, your heart can achieve. Yes. You can do anything in this world. Yes. Put your mind to it and put it in your heart. Whatever your dream is, live it. Because this life is short and don't be running on a treadmill. Amen. Absolutely. Thank you. What a beautiful closing statement, Rico. Stay on the line. But until next time, viewers, this has been Styling the Podcast. I am your host, Emir, my co-host, WWE superstar, Rico Casatino, the stylist, the number one stylist in the world. Emir, <laughs> number uno. Numero uno. <laughs> Ichiban in Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> Until next week, everybody. Take care. Punch that button. Yes. Punch the subscribe button and jump over to Patreon. We're there, too. All hey. right. Until next time. Bye, everyone.